Hello and welcome to another Windows 7 tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at how to format to the USB flash drive. So what we're going to do is click on the start and we're going to go to my computer. And as you can see I already got my flash drive plugged in. It's currently an 8 gig flash drive and it's formatted at NTFS file system. I'm just going to right click on that and go to format. And as you can see it just confirms the capacity that you'll have and the next thing that you'll be able to choose is the different file systems. Now there's three different file systems that you'll be able to choose. You'll be able to choose NTFS, FAT32, which is also a default one, or XFAT. Now there's fundamental differences between each or all of these and I'll just quickly run through those now. So the pros of FAT32, um, it's good cross-platform compatibility, so if you have multiple operating systems at home or in your workspace, for example if you're using Windows, any version of Windows or any version of Mac OS X, uh, Snow Leopard, Lion, when that comes out. Uh, for example, you'll be able to um, go backwards and forwards uh, writing and deleting um, as you go along. However, the uh, biggest issue with FAT32 is that it has a file size limit, a maximum file size limit of 4 gigabytes. So if you have a single file, for example, let's say in, in a situation where you have a video file um, which is 4 gigabytes or a larger, um, no matter how big your memory stick might be, it might be an 8 gig memory stick, you can still only fit a single file of 4 gigabytes on that. So if you have a file which is 2 gigabytes, um, you can fit that on just fine. Um, obviously you can have 4 files which are 2 gigabytes to fill up the 8 gigabytes, which is fine. But the single file limit is 4 gigabytes. So obviously in this day and age it's probably best that we stay away from that because generally most people will be using files that are slightly bigger. Uh, but obviously suit it to your own needs. So FAT32 generally tends to be faster with uh, write speeds. Uh, the next other file system that we're going to look at is XFAT. That's also known as FAT64. Uh, the pros of this is that there's no actual limitation to file size. So that's great. So there's no 4 gigabyte limitations like its younger brother, the FAT32. So that's fine. Um, and there's also uh, has a fairly fast write speed for single files generally and it, it requires actual less disk space overhead so um, for example uh, disk space overhead is the amount of disk space that's required by the uh, file system um, that's deducted from the actual total file space so for example like I said uh, I have an 8 gig flash drive here it's currently formatted as NTFS and clearly it's taken off um, almost uh, half a gigabyte straight just for uh, formatting it as an NTFS hence I can only see 7.53 gigabytes of it so XFAT generally would take less um, overhead space, which is uh, a good thing if you're quite space conscious or if you've got a smaller disk file uh, that you still want good compatibility with other operating systems. For example, again, Mac OS X or Windows. So if you're constantly switching between uh, each other, uh, then uh, that's a good file system to go for. Uh, and also if it's quite a fairly small uh, flash drive. Now NTFS, um, it doesn't have any of these limitations to uh, file size. It has reasonable read and write speeds, uh, but the simple thing is that in this day and age, NTFS is going to be the best one to go for if you're uh, moving a lot of large files, um, mostly between Windows. Um, OS X is able to read them, and with uh, specific software, you will actually be able to write to them as well. Um, so that covers the file system, so I'm going to leave that as NTFS because my use for my um, USB flash drive is probably going to be for videos, um, so um, I'm going to leave it as NTFS. Again, if you're just using it for documents and things like that, then FAT32 or XFAT is perfectly fine. You can also allocate uh, a, an allocation of, of the unit size, so you can actually state how big you want the uh, partition to be. Uh, I want to leave it as a default allocation size because I want to get the maximum amount of the capacity. I'd probably suggest you do the same thing uh, simply because these are tiny file sizes and um, you know it's going to be a complete waste of time if you use that. So leave it as def default allocation size. You can also click the restore def uh, device default so if, if it came pre-formatted as uh, for example uh, FAT32 then you can obviously just click that and it will automatically have all the settings for you. For example I just clicked it now and um, it's changed it to FAT32, but we want it as NTFS. You can also actually label the volume, so let's just call it extra disk. Now there's two different types of formatting. Uh, there's a quick format and there's uh, just a full-blown full format. Now if I uncheck this, it will do a full format. So 
what's the difference between a quick format and a, a normal format? Well, a full format will remove all the files from that volume, but it will also, as an added bonus, scan for bad sectors on on us on that disk. Um, so, for example, if this was a uh, hard drive or uh, even on even on flash drives, um, any sectors that are bad or have been written bad by uh, the file system, or if there's been any corruption to any of these sectors, then it will be picked up or red flagged by the um, scan so that it knows that it shouldn't write to that sector. Um, so basically it kind of like helps to uh, diagnose whether your disk is actually uh, working properly and it's got, it, you know, it's fully healthy, etc. So if we do a quick format, it's gonna wipe everything off it, but it's not gonna scan for disk sectors. Now, if you do a quick format, uh, for example, like we're going to do now, um, you can actually do a full uh, sector check afterwards. So I'll show you how to do that. So uh, for this purpose, we'll leave it um, as quick format. And then we'll just go to start. And it's just going to warn you that it's going to wipe everything. Again, guys, this is going to, and girls, um, this is going to wipe uh, everything off your disk. So don't forget, to, if you do have anything on here, then try to back it up. Generally, remember that you only really need to format your disk if you're having problems with it. Um, and there is also a, another tool that you can use um, to actually to help you find out if there are any problems, uh, which I'll show you in a bit. So, okay. Okay. And we'll just close that. And that's done. So as you can see, it's uh, changed the disk name to EctaDisk, and we have 7.46 gigabytes uh, free from 7.53 gigabytes. Again, we lost that point uh, for uh, seven simply because we formatted it as NTFS. So um, if we wanted to actually run that sector check now, what I'll do is I'll right click on it and go to properties. And then you want to hit the tools and then you want to check for errors. So we're going to go check now. And as you can see, uh, you've got two options. You can automatically fix file system errors. So this is a, a good option to choose if you're having problems reading off the actual flash drive or if it's acting up. Let's say you're in a scenario where you've got a crucial presentation, uh, a PowerPoint presentation on your flash drive, and uh, it works perfectly fine on your on your machine. But when you've put it onto the stick and you've put it onto the laptop, and all of a sudden it doesn't, it's not picking up the file. Uh, most likely it's probably an issue with the actual filing system uh, which has gone corrupt and generally this actually fixes uh, the file system uh, corruption and will help you to actually get the um, file working again or files working again and remember this won't actually wipe anything off the stick um, so it's a great way to actually just quickly see if uh, there are any problems and sort of diagnose it, diagnose it this way first rather than uh, subjecting and going straight to uh, a, a hard format. So we'll click both because we want to scan for any bad sectors. So we'll click on start. And now it's just going to check across the whole of the stick and see if there's any problems. Okay, so we've just fully scanned the disk and it found no problems at this time, uh, obviously because we've just formatted it. Um, so we can just uh, close that and we can go OK. So that's it. Uh, we now have a fully working uh, functional uh, disk drive. Okay, so when you finish, don't forget to close all the windows associated with any of the files that you might have on the USB device. Uh, so we're just going to close that. And what we want to do is remove this disk securely and safely. So what we want to do is go to the taskbar and then just right click on it and then navigate to your model of the uh, USB flash drive. So I'm just going to click on that and it's going to be removed safely. And that's it. After that, you can unplug it and take it wherever you want. So that's it. Thank you very much for watching this tutorial. Don't forget to check out our site at ectotech.co.uk forward slash blog for more information on any products that we sell or also any walkthrough videos that we might have on those products. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button as we'll have plenty more videos coming up in the future. And uh, if you have any requests for any videos, don't forget to just leave a comment below. Thanks very much for watching. And until next time, goodbye.